Let's go a little bit further. In chapter 4, verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Here's our word sealed again. Do not grieve the Holy, the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. He now brings up grieving the seal. Okay? The Holy Spirit is sealed into the life of every believer. He's God's Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity. He says, do not grieve him. To grieve somebody is to make them sad. To grieve somebody is to make them unhappy. To grieve somebody is to, is to make them cry. To grieve somebody is to bring, bring that mournful atmosphere into their lives. Many are parent has been grieved by their child, what their child did, or been grieved by their mate, what their mate did, or what their mate said. They've been made sad. Well, the Holy Spirit is a person. Let me tell you about the, per the emotional state of the Holy Spirit. One of our sermons on the Holy Spirit refers to him as a dove. A dove, the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus as a dove. Let's review. Doves are very sensitive birds. They're extremely sensitive. Just a look in their direction and they'll go, they'll fly off quickly. These pure, white, beautiful doves move quickly away when there is a threat of any kind. They don't hang around and see. They will, to use human language, cry quickly. When a man says about a woman, she's so sensitive. A woman says about a man, he's so sensitive. In other words, easily offended, easily grieved, easily made sad, not, not, not thick-skinned. He says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be easily grieved. He is the sensitive member of the Trinity. Now, why is grieving him important? When you grieve a person, using human terms, what you have done is you have broken off the intimacy with that person. If you make a person sad, they can't be close to you. They can't feel like communicating with you. You've caused them hurt and pain. They want to shy back from you because you've wounded them. He says, you have a seal. This seal is the Holy Spirit. Do not make him unhappy. Do not make him sad. So the question is, what grieves the Holy Spirit? How do you make him like a dove fly off and fly away? Well, look at verse 29. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Go to now verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So let me tell you what makes the Holy Spirit cry. What makes the Holy Spirit mourn? What makes the Holy Spirit sad? In all of these verses, and you can read verses 25 all the way through to the uh, final verse of this chapter, verse uh, 32. What grieves the Holy Spirit is when we use unkind words, have malicious thoughts, or bitter spirits. Unkind words, malicious thoughts or bitter spirits. 
when those things are operating in the life of the believer, the Holy Spirit has been made sad. He says, let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. An unwholesome word is a word that brings damage to another person. It's profanity, cursing a person out. It is uh, uh, offensive language. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4 puts it this way. He says, let there be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse jesting, jokes designed to hurt people, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. What he is saying is, when you use your mouth in cussing or cursing, two different words, cussing is profanity. Cursing is where you wish ruin on somebody. When you say, I wish you were dead, you have pronounced a ruinous curse on them. When you use humor to hurt, so it really wasn't a joke, you just made it sound like a joke because the goal was wounding. Things to make you laugh is not what he's talking about. That's sheer humor. He's talking about coarse jesting. A joke with sandpaper on it. In other words, you, you are seeking to wound with your words. You need to know when you do that, you have upset the Holy Spirit. And where is the Holy Spirit? He's sealed in you. He says in verse 30, whom you were sealed until the day of redemption. Many of us need to gargle daily with spiritual mouthwash because we have dirty mouths and dirty speech and denigrating talk. And far too many of us, that's the way we roll. We say, we dare say, well, that's just the way I talk. No, it's like the lady said to her pastor. She said, Pastor, I, I, got a, I got a bad use to my tongue and I want to put my tongue on the altar. The pastor said, lady, lady, we don't have an altar that big because she really had a bad mouth. <laughs> well, it's like the, uh, uh, the, the daughter who her father was a pastor and the daughter said, uh, darn. She used the word darn. And he, he said, what, what? Oh, no, we don't use that kind of word. But to encourage you, I'm going to give you a quarter if you never use the word darn again. The daughter looked at her daddy, who was a pastor, and said, well, shucks, daddy, I know some words worth a dollar. Because a lot of us feel that way. A lot of us feel like we can go deeper, deeper, deeper. We compete with the, with the worst sailors in how we talk, how we put down people, even if it's not profanity we seek to hurt with our language. And the Holy Spirit is offended because he's like a dove. Psalm 109 verses 17 and 18 says, when you curse, not, not cuss, but curse, that is speak to a person's ruin. When you do that, you have created a boomerang. And he says, and it comes back on you. So when you go after somebody else, and wish their ruin, you've actually invited that ruin upon yourself. Ah, that'll make you think twice about what you say, right? That's why we've got to make sure that we watch our mouths, that if we are concerned about our speech. When you go to the doctor, one of the first things he says is stick out your tongue. He's not just looking for things on your tongue. He knows that sticking out your tongue will indicate whether there are deeper things going on inside. And the way we speak to one another, the way husbands speak to wives, wives speak to husbands, parents to children, saints to saints, races to races, even among Christians. It is showing by our tongue something much deeper is going on. And that is the Holy Spirit is grieved in side of us. He is grieved by bitterness. He goes on to say, where you intentionally carry around a bitter spirit, wrath, where you're seeking to hurt somebody else due to your anger, 
You slander people. You, you, you try to destroy them with your tongue. The absence of kindness to be hard-hearted and cruel, mean-spirited, and to hold grudges. Now, this forgiveness doesn't mean you've reconciled. Reconciliation only comes when repentance is there. But you must forgive so that you can go on. Why? Because you do not want to have a grieved Holy Spirit locked up inside of you. Let me say that again. You don't want to have a grieved Holy Spirit sealed within you because you can't get rid of it. So every believer has the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is locked up inside of you. He is sealed. So when you grieve him, where is he going to express his grief? Inside of you. Because guess where he is? He's inside of you. How long is he inside of you? Till the day of redemption. So he's permanently inside of you. Which means if you grieve the Holy Spirit on a regular basis, watch this now, you are going to be an unhappy Christian. Ah. You know why a lot of Christians are miserable? Because they got a mourning Holy Spirit operating within them. The Holy Spirit's crying every day. Have you ever seen a wife who cries every day or a child who cries every day, mourns every day because of how their loved one speaks to them? Did you know that a lot of us are living with a crying Holy Spirit, a grieving Holy Spirit? Well, guess where the Holy Spirit is? He's combined with your human spirit. So if you have a grieving Holy Spirit connected with your human spirit, how do you think your soul is going to function? You're going to have a miserable soul. That's why you can be sitting next to a miserable saint or married to a miserable Christian because they have a grieving, sad, unhappy Holy Spirit operating within them because of how they are functioning as a Christian. They're not being filled with the Spirit. They're not walking with the Spirit. And they are perpetually living in a spiritual ICU, intensive care unit, because of their spiritual condition. People want to know, how can you be saved and be this miserable, this much, for this long? Because by your tongue or your attitude or your actions, you got a Holy Ghost crying all the time. And if he's sad all the time, and I'm using human language of tears to express the grief, the sadness. So if he's sad and he's sealed in you, you're going to be sad. So you see, this Holy Spirit thing is not, a, not a, a, a small thing. Just the opposite is true, however. If you make him happy, you're going to be happy. By your speech, by your attitude by your kindness, by your forgiveness, then he's smiling, your soul is smiling, so we can see a new grin on your faith, face. That's really the joy of the Lord. It's when the Holy Spirit settles things down in your soul because he's comfortable with you. You can be in a relationship with somebody you're not comfortable with. Well, a lot of Christians don't make the Holy Spirit feel good. But, that can change simply by addressing what he says beginning in verse 25 to verse 32 of Ephesians 4. So you need to read that and like read it again and like reread it again. And then after you read it that time, read it again so that you're not making the Holy Spirit sad so that you can be glad and you can free him up to do his work in your life.